Today we unearth the majesty that is Elementary OS 6.1. It really is one of the most beautiful distros ever made, just in terms of design and styling. And I think that's something that people take for granted too. It's the design and user experience of the thing. It's not just how the desktop looks, but how it feels. Elementary OS has always been about the plank at the bottom and the bar at the top. It's very minimalistic and I like it. They recently added a dark mode and accent colors and yeah, I'm getting ahead of myself here. This episode is about Elementary OS 6.1, which came out on a Monday in December 2021. Where Elementary OS 6 was called Odin, 6.1 is called Yolnir, another from Viking Mythos. It looks like a lot of work went into the polish and refinement of existing apps and features for this release. They put a lot of work into App Center, which got a nicer looking homepage and a better category view. They also made tweaks and changes to how App Center shows software sources, or basically where your software is coming from. They improved how the dark theme applied to other apps and updated the top bar's application menu to search your bookmarks. Another fantastic thing they did with this release is update the audio indicator to give you more control over your inputs and outputs. From being just another point release, a heck of a lot of stuff went into it. So let's roll the dial back even further to the installer, because I always like to see how distros make their way onto the user's system. And guess what? They made improvements here too, mostly just a bug fix around how the installer ensures your host name matches your device name. There's honestly not much else to say about the installer other than it's just like stupidly simple. Unlike the GhostBSD installer, which offered a decent amount of configuration, I think that the only major bit of customization to the elementary OS installer is the option to encrypt your hard drive. Here's where we first see the glory that is Pantheon's accent colors and preferred color mode. You guys know I've used a lot of distros, and I can confidently say that Elementary OS 6 is the nicest looking distro I've ever used to date. Now I'm not saying it's the best ever, period, but for me, this really is the bee's knees. Now the most striking thing about any new Elementary OS install is the background, and it's cool that the team really understood that. See, I often talk about backgrounds in the series because they really are important. The desktop wallpaper is one of the first things a new user will see, so it has to make a good impression. And this default wallpaper definitely does. The desktop has quite a few configuration options, which is funny when you consider that pre-elementary OS 6 having virtually no styling options. A fresh install will, of course, need updates, and from here we can see the refreshed App Center with its new homepage and improved layout. But before we get the ball rolling with these updates, I should mention that a fresh install of Elementary OS weighs in at about 8 gigabytes, and Pantheon, the desktop environment that it uses, consumes a little over 700 megabytes at idle. Elementary's NeoFetch is pretty cool looking, and it helps that the terminal app is just good looking in general. This is Elementary 6.1 Yolnir running Linux kernel 5.13.0. It uses a mixture of deb and flatpak packages, though there's more of an emphasis on flatpaks with each release. Elementary uses the Pantheon desktop environment written all in Vala based on GTK and uses the Gala window manager. If you couldn't already tell, there are a lot of things I like about Elementary OS. The tiny system footprint for being just a general desktop user's distro is one of them. The gaming performance in Elementary has always been top notch, and I think the low overhead of the system in general contributes to this. The various luxuries offered by the window manager, such as built-in picture-in-picture mode and shortcuts that let you take screenshots of windows simply by right-clicking them, that's pretty cool. The control panel or system settings app follows a simple contemporary design and it's easy to find everything. Honestly, I think that the control panel is one of the most underrated parts of the whole system. But nothing is perfect and Elementary OS does have a few major flaws that honestly keep me from using it full time, as well as lots of minor bugs that I ran to just while testing it. The lack of indicator support is a pretty big one because many of the apps I use basically require them. For example, Steam and a lot of Windows apps use them. If you try to close an application that closes to an indicator, it just winds up getting stuck running permanently. Unless it's like a wine app, which creates a floating tray, which is an application in and of itself, it's just a really bad workflow. Another thing that's always annoyed me is how the window controls and decorations are really redundant. So close and maximize are reversed if you're used to windows, but if you're like me and you simply double click the window title to maximize it, it makes the dedicated maximize decoration pointless. 
The file manager has this weird focus problem where if you're actually using it, there's one icon that's brighter than the rest. But if you focus away, all of the icons, including that one icon, go back to the same brightness or whatever. Searching for something in all caps brings up the calculator. Now, I feel like this might be some weird obscure feature that I'm not understanding, but if I just type something in all caps in the launcher and it shows the calculator, that just feels like a bug. There's a cool little battery indicator that shows you which apps are using a lot of power, but I found on multiple occasions that indicator would appear and it would show nothing. While I was testing GTA Online, I tried to Alt-Tab and the window switcher got stuck right in the middle of the screen. Since there was nothing else that I could switch to, I could not get rid of it. The only way that I could remove the thing was to make the game window windowed and then go back to full screen. Yikes. Now there are a couple other bugs with the music and video player apps, but these ones were pretty big. If you open a bunch of audio files with the music app in a location that isn't the default music player, nothing really shows up in the app besides the now playing section. Now this might seem normal, but if you close everything and then move your files to the music directory and reopen it, it populates everything as you would expect. Again, this feels like it might be a feature or how they designed it, but it also feels a bit like a bug. What doesn't feel like a feature is how the whole system locks up if I try to play a bunch of unsupported video files at once. I asked some friends to try this one too, and they had the same issue. If I try to open one, Elementary OS will struggle. Sometimes it will lock up, but it usually recovers. If I try to open all of them at once, the system is done. It happens on a VM and on hardware. This is not good. But what is good is that Elementary OS played nicely with all of my removable media, including my encrypted drive, and it also connected to my Bluetooth keyboard without any issues. And we have to take a step back to the gaming performance again because it always impresses me how well Elementary plays with games. And unlike other Linux distros, as far as I know, the Elementary team does nothing at all to enable or optimize gaming performance. Now I forgot to install Mango HUD for the video clips, but the benchmark returned a solid 30 frames a second almost the whole way. And that's what it feels like playing GTA Online. It's honestly really impressive for this integrated GPU. So yeah, that's gonna wrap up Elementary OS 6.1. It's a bit of a mixed bag if I'm honest. I feel like certain things have improved while others have regressed, but I'm interested to hear what you all think of this. I've not found many other Linux distros like this one, so let me know if you know where I can find some. I appreciate all your support, and I hope to see you at the next Delve.